earlier, um, before we started, I was asking Jordan, who's our speaker today, if, if she was a graphic artist, because, you know, people think just graphic artists use it. She's like, no way. So she's going to tell you more about that. I just want to tell you how you can engage in just a moment. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup, and I love it when you guys show up for us. Um, somebody's already turned on the closed caption. So if you are if you need the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen, and you'll be able to use a closed caption. We will send you this video recording tomorrow. You're going to get it tomorrow. Maybe later today. We'll see how the weather holds up for me. Um, if you learned something cool on this webinar, share it on your social media and just hashtag us at TechSoup. I'm going to get ready to turn this over to Jordan Ellis. She is a community manager based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And she's been an entrepreneur for over 12 years, much like all of us, right? But one good thing about her, she supports all small businesses and brands with their team at Adobe Express. Jordan, welcome. Thank you for being Hi. here. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Thank you all so much for joining. I love seeing where everyone is from. Um, I'm also kind of curious too, if you want to share if you use Adobe products at all, if you used Adobe Express, if you use something else, I'm super curious about that. Uh, let me get my screen share going, make sure I have all this set up right and I can still see the chat. Um, I'm going to be answering questions throughout. So please feel free to drop questions in the chat. Um, actually, will someone type something now so that my chat will pop back up? It always disappears when I share my screen. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Have Photoshop. Don't use it. Use some apps from Creative Cloud. I, Nancy uses Express and Pro. Use Adobe products. Okay, cool. InDesign on an old Mac, Adobe Suite student account. Yes. So, Dan, they don't know how to use it. Uh, okay, cool. So for everyone who has Adobe and is saying they're not really sure how to use it, I am very excited to show you Adobe Express because I also don't really know how to use a lot of the rest of the creative cloud. There are so many incredible products that are like super powerful. Um, they do tend to take some time to get to know and like really figure out how to use it for what you want, which is why I love Adobe Express so much. Um, like was mentioned in my intro, I don't have a professional design background. I've learned a few tricks from being at Adobe for the past two years, but I really genuinely use Adobe Express. Um, it is the design software that I know how to use because you can learn how to use it in about 10 minutes. So by the end of today, you should all be experts. And for those who are um, interested in also using Photoshop or Illustrator, I'll show you that you can bring some of those files into Adobe Express too. So there's really something for everybody, whether you have a design background, whether you don't, um, hopefully we can show you how to do things faster, make, th make things faster, and also share them with your team. Because I know a lot of nonprofits like entrepreneurs wear all of the different hats. Um, so I have also done the job of, you know, every single part of a business and sometimes trying to get other folks to help with different things or wanting to share brands or share projects. So with that started, can Adobe Express do animations? Yes. And I will show that. Um, we want to create PowerPoints. Perfect. This is the homepage of Adobe Express. This is what you'll find if you go to express.adobe.com. There's nothing to download. So for those of you who have the Creative Cloud, certain products you have to download to your machine. This you don't. You just log in right up here with your Adobe ID. If you don't have one yet, you can make one for free. The really cool thing for nonprofits, which I love partnering with TechSoup for, is that you can actually get the premium version of Adobe Express for free by signing up through TechSoup. So there's a free version, which anyone can use, but there's a premium version, and I'll show some of the features that are included only in premium. There's a little crown icon, which lets you know there are certain templates, certain fonts, certain features that you can only use um, if you have a premium account. And I'm very excited that we can use those. Uh, thank you to TechSoup. Everyone gets access to that, which is great. So like I said, you can uh, just log in on your browser. Um, we have an update that just came out, I think exactly a week ago, two weeks ago, maybe. 
Um, so if you've used an older version of Adobe Express, it might look brand new, or if you played with our beta, it'll look more similar. Um, just let you know, Chrome is the browser that works the best. We have a couple other supported browsers and we're working to add more, but if you're having issues, maybe try working in Google Chrome if you can. Just a little bit of a very brief um, background and to let you know, everything is like set up to be very easy to use. So lots of things, if you hover over them, you'll get some more information. Um, lots of the buttons are either called exactly what they are, or you can click into them and it should be self-explanatory, but please feel free to drop questions as we go through. So Adobe Express has options to create things from scratch, to start from our templates, which is my favorite way to make things, or to start from projects that are shared with by other people. So at the top, it's asking, what do you want to make? If I want to make social media posts, video, photo, some documents, I can click through that way. I can also scroll down and see suggested posts. So if I want to make a flyer, I can create from scratch or browse templates. And over here, as I hover, it gives me the dimension. So this is like an eight and a half by 11 flyer. Same thing with poster, Instagram square posts. So I can click any of these, which I'll do and browse from templates or create from scratch. Down here, we have, um, we have, this is, Sorry, I just realized I didn't have the Q&A open. Um, how does it know if we registered with TechSoup to use the premium version? So yeah, you basically create an account through TechSoup and the account, like you put in your Adobe information there. And so a, our, your Adobe ID will know that you're signed in through TechSoup. So you don't have to use Adobe Express any differently. Um, you just log in with your account that is um, that you've registered through TechSoup. So here we have something brand new, which is text to image. I don't know if anyone has ever played with generative AI before, but Adobe has a generative AI tool that's also brand new. It's still in beta, as you can see. It's called Adobe Firefly. I won't talk a ton about that because there is so much to talk about with generative AI. But to let you know, we train only on Adobe stock images. So it is uh, designed to be commercially friendly and you can use any of these in your Adobe Express projects. So this is something that you can type in a prompt. Like if I wanted it to be, um, maybe I'm creating a flyer for a picnic and I want to create an image that has that, I can type that in here. If you're not sure what you want to share or what you want to create, you can also hover. So I can see like, this is a cottage overgrown with ancient trees. I can start from that prompt. This is like a more intense steampunk rhino prompt. Um, so I can, I'll show how to click into that. Um, Stephanie says, I've used it. It's great, but still a little limited with the images. Let me know if you mean like what it'll give you or that they look the same or they don't look like what you expect them to look like because this is still in beta. So we're really interested in hearing how you all feel about it. So I'll go back and show how to use those, but just to finish out the homepage, we have some suggested quick actions, which are things you can do with just one button. So for example, if you have a video and you need to convert it to a GIF, you just click on this and then you can either drag and drop or browse a video here, drop that, it'll convert into a GIF. Or if you need to create a QR code for a flyer or something, you can just click on generate QR code and then drop your link. You can choose different styles. You can choose different colors and how you want to download it. You can download it that way. <clears throat> are all the images in Adobe Express, including those are created through text image free to use without concern of copyright? Yeah, in our terms and conditions, Adobe Express is able to be used commercially. So as soon as this comes out of beta, um, which should be very soon, they'll be designed to be commercially friendly. So you can use those um, and you can read through the terms and conditions like I'm not a lawyer, but 
yes, these are set up to be used commercially. Um, and you can also do things like this is one of my favorite features. You can animate from audio. So you can make a character if you want. You can choose from any of these. Um, this is, I think, especially fun for using with younger people, but anyone can use it. So you choose a character, you choose a background, you can choose what size you want. If you want it to be a story, um, you can move your character around and then you just hit record and record any kind of audio clip that you want. Um, it's two minutes max. So it's like a quick and easy thing. And then it'll animate your character for you. So this is something I see teachers and folks working with students a lot. And it's great. And then the very last thing down here is text effects. So if you wanted to type out a word and have the the letters actually look like a certain effect, um, we have flowers, we have disco ball, you can click in and edit that in any kind of way. So let me show how to use some of these in a project. Yes, and we have a question from Joshua Baker about resizing. I'll show that too. One last thing, sorry. Over here on the left, this is kind of your panel. We were just on the home panel and now we can go into your stuff and see files, brands, and libraries. Steven's asking when the curve text feature will be restored. I don't have a date. I know the team is working on it. Um, That's been a huge request. So I hope soon, but I am not sure the date on that. Um, so here in your stuff, we have three options from the top. We have files. So these are the files that I've created in the past. We have brands. So these are really great if you want to set up a brand for your nonprofit. Um, branding is a whole thing. It can be like a massive project that you can hire out a branding agency for, or you can create something yourself right here in Adobe Express. So if you want to hit create a brand, um, I'm going to type in, uh, this is not the name <laughs> that I would call my nonprofit, but just to have something, um, I can create a brand. And then so you can see, you just click to upload your logo, click to add your colors. You can, um, oops, Excellent to use the color picker to pick white, but you can import hex codes. You can create your own colors here. Adding fonts, you can choose from the entire Adobe font library. And like I was saying, there are some premium assets. So those are the things you can see here. Um, these are all the things that you'll have premium access to by signing up through TechSoup. You can also save graphics and templates. You just click to upload. So I'll show a finished one. This is my brand. So I have my little logo. I literally just typed my name out in Adobe Express. This is my uh, my work brand that I use for Adobe. These are the colors that I use to stay kind of close to the Adobe Express like rainbow color palette. My fonts, some graphics that I made. So I drew these out in Fresco, just some little doodles. I am not a trained designer. So these are just like some little stars and hearts. And then I also brought in this image from Adobe Express. Um, this is a graphic, which you can just bring in and I could add some templates. And to show one more, uh, this is a more extensive one, but you could full, fill out an entire brand with like different versions of your logo, different color variations, a full color palette, fonts, and then these are graphics that were actually created in Adobe Illustrator and were brought into Adobe Express in this brand kit and some templates that were saved. So depending on if you have like two colors and one logo or a bunch of color variations and a ton of design assets, you can really use the brand kit however you want. Um, and you can share it with your team. So I'll go back to mine. I can hit this share button and I can invite people so I can invite the other folks on my team. If I had like interns or a designer or I'm the designer and I want to share this with folks who need to be creating for my nonprofit, I can do that. And then, yeah, over here we have explore and schedule, which I explore is just like a more extensive search. Um, schedule is the social media scheduler, which I'll show more, um, 
as we create a post and then learn our more resources, learning about social media or Adobe Express. So feel free to click into that and check that out. Let's actually go to explore now and I'm going to search for a nonprofit template. I can also choose photo, video, design assets, background text, but I want a template. And you can see there are a lot of different things. If you know something more specific, like if you want to search for something like a thank you post, or you want to search for a presentation, like we were talking about, you can also do like different social posts. Um, let me see if I can find, let me look for a presentation. We also have some templates that are multiple pages. So I'm going to click that. Okay, here, this is like a video, um, which we could use as a presentation slide, sure. So let's work off of this template. This is already a video template. So as I can see down here, we have a timeline and you can toggle on or off show layer timing. And what that means is this is our project over here on the side, we have something called layers, which those of you who use other Adobe products will probably be familiar with, but it's basically just the order that things show up um, in front of each other. So if I like bring this photo to the top, it'll show up in front of everything. Um, and the fun thing about video is that you can also change the layers of all of that down here. But starting from the beginning, Let's play this template first and see what it looks like. So this is like an animated presentation slide. Okay, cool. And we have things kind of popping in. So we have a logo down here we have this video and we have some things that we can change. One of my favorite things about Adobe Express, especially using templates, is that you can actually just click on things and make them whatever you want. So let's start first with changing the font. I'm going to click into this box, I'm going to click highlight all of the text or I can control A. And then over here, I can change the font. So my brand is highlighted up here. If this is the wrong one, I can click over here and choose one of my other brands or libraries, but I already have the one I want. And I'm gonna change this font to my brand font. I can make it maybe semi-bold. That feels good. I can change the size of the text here. I can also choose, so this is the font weight here, but I can also choose to bold or italicize or underline here. We have alignment, we have bullet points, and this is text spacing. So if I want the lines to be way more spread out or way closer together, I can also do some letter spacing here. Um, um so that's all there. There's something also fun called dynamic text, which gives you this like box. Like it it basically uh, justifies and or capitalizes everything. So you can turn that on or off. That actually looks great. So I'm going to keep that on um, and you can kind of affect what it looks like. But I'm going to leave that on. You can also change the color of the text. So here's my brand kit. I'll use this. If I want it to be outlined with a color, I can do that. But uh, yeah, sure. We can keep that. Change the thickness, change the opacity if I want it to be see-through or not. And then these are some other fun things, which will probably look a little wild with this many words, but you can add a shadow. I'll, I don't want that though. You can add um, a shape. And you can also have it animate. So here it's actually already dropping in. As we hit play, you can see it's coming in here from the left. Um, and you can see that it's coming in a little bit late. So that's how you can change text. You can really like affect it in any way you want. I'm going to click on some of the things um, over here. So right now this blue I want to change is the background color so I can go and I can change it to maybe this yellow or a green. I can take this. Um, this is, it looks like this was actually kind of created together. So we have a book here and we have the logo. I'll leave the book and I'm going to delete this text, go into my stuff 
brands and libraries. And I'm going to bring over my own logo here. Click on that. And it will appear here. So now we have this. Um, if I want to move this around, I can. I like it here. And if I want to change this video, I am here clicking on this video that's actually been cropped into a shape. Um, so that is a fun thing that you can do. And then I'll hit this first button is replace. So here we have, um, we have a child reading. Let's see what other options we have. You can use Adobe stock photos and video in Adobe Express, which is super cool. So these are all Adobe stock videos. I don't have to license them separately. I don't have to do anything. They're just here ready to use. So maybe I want um, a different type of reading. This is like a reading classroom. Let's do that. So I'm just going to click on this. And now the video has been replaced. So now I have a different video here. I could also upload from my computer if I had one. I don't have any videos of folks reading on my computer right now. But that's how easy it is to take a template and kind of tweak it to what you want it to be. This template was actually a multiple page template. So I am, by clicking this button here in the top, I can see the two pages. And now I can click over to page two if I want or I can also hit this arrow to go to page two and let's see what this. Okay. So this is like another, um, this is another text template with a bunch of different text coming through that I, you can click on each of these text boxes to change them. Um, I'm just going to change the font quickly, but to have it match the other one. And I'm going to make this semi-bold. Um, you can obviously just click into the letters to change them, which is something that I don't feel like you need to have a demo. I know you all know how to change text. Um, you can make it italicized. That was a bit of an accident. Cool. And change this last one so that all of the text matches, which is lovely. Here we go. And now... How do you create your own video from your own uploaded slides? Okay, cool. I'll do that. I'll create a new page um, for video. I'll just change the background color here to a different one. Maybe my branded orange. Yeah, I like that. So now we have exactly, this is a template. We have these two pages. What I could do is like duplicate this page to change it to have a third page, or I can just add one like Stephanie's asking to upload your own slides. So here's a totally blank page. If I have a slide that's already made, I can go into media, upload from device, and then upload something um, like a graphic that I already have. You can also trying to think of what I could upload for myself. Um, I don't have any slides already made, but for example, I'll just go into, I'll just add some text to make a new slide. Um, I'll make a introducing our team slide. So to start from scratch or from to make your own video, um, I'm going to make this the right font. I'm going to change the background color to one of my brand colors. I'm going to add my own photo. So I'll go to media, upload from device. Um, I'll add my own picture here. If I want to maybe add a shape behind it, I could crop this. So if I want this to be a circle, I can crop this into a circle. And then I can also go into elements, shapes, circle. Uh, maybe I want this to be purple. Oops. Here, this is what I want. My bad. I want this to be purple. I want this to be behind the picture of me and I want to bring this 
Here we go. Make this a little smaller. Cool. So I could then, you know, write in a whole bio. I'm not going to do that. I'll just maybe add uh, something. I'll add just something over here to fill out this. Um, and then to make this into my own video, I can either do animations. So I can click on everything separately and scroll down to the bottom and animation. So if I want this to animate like drop down and then I want maybe this uh, this to be spinning, I can make that you know fast or slow and change the direction. I can also add a video, like if I want this photo to be a video instead, I could go into media, add my own video. Um, but here I'm going to use Adobe Express's video so I could do this. Um, I'll delete this picture of me and I'll take this video, crop this video into a circle. And then there we go. Make that the right size. Center it a little bit. So now I've just made a video from scratch basically, but you could upload your own, you know, upload your own slides. Um, and I'll show how to bring in something like a PDF. Can you review adding audio music behind video? Yes. So here we have an audio section. I think I am not sharing music in my screen share, but I could add um, lo-fi music here. So now that's here. I can have it start later or go the whole time. Um, you can also in the audio section, record a voiceover. So if this was an Instagram story, instead of a slide, um, I could just hit record voiceover and then hit start recording, which I won't do right now, but yeah, you can add your own audio. And then, um, Laylee's asking, can you make a transparent background on an existing lo logo file? You can. So I think you might have to remove the background if there is one already, but to make a transparent background on any project, you go up to background color and hit this no fill. So now I can download this with a transparent background, which I wouldn't do because this is a presentation slide, um, but I could do that. And you could do that for anything. Um, so for example, if I, like this wouldn't really make sense, um, but I could, have the fill be none here and then add like a border. Um, so any, anything you click into to change the color, you can do this no fill and it will give you nothing. There's one last thing that I forgot about. I'm going to make this back to its normal. Let's see if this is a good example. Um, okay. We cropped this video back out. I'm going to go ahead and delete the circle. You can also remove the background of video. Uh, Stephanie's asking how to convert to Instagram without signing into Facebook. I tried the other day and I have to have a Facebook account, which I don't. For convert, do you mean schedule to? Um, because our social media scheduler, you have to have an Instagram business account or like professional account and you do need a Facebook for that, but you can create Instagram posts in here without signing into anything. So Stephanie, let me know um, what you're asking. But yeah, so now we have removed the background of this video, which is fun. So if you want to do things like that, um, now we have this kind of floating Giphy type video. So I've shown a lot of features in this slide. Um, this is kind of a chaotic slide. So let me go into a project that maybe makes more sense. I'm going to go back to the homepage and I am going to edit a PDF that I've already created. So I'm going to go into start from content. And if anyone ever like you get a PDF from maybe someone else on your team or you, um, you like have to change something and you don't have the original working, the editable file, you can actually edit all of that in Adobe express. So I'm going to open this food drive PDF. You could also just drag it in if you wanted to, um, you had it on your desktop, but I, have this, you know, not super exciting PDF here. 
It is converting to be editable in Adobe Express. So I'm going to hit open an editor. So now I have this PDF that I can kind of click on anything and change it. So say the date changed and it's actually going to be September. Um, and it's going to start at 9 a.m. instead. I can go through and change all of this. I can move things around. I can also make this a little more interesting. So I could go into something like elements, backgrounds here, and I could search. Let's see what happens if we search for a food background. I could do something like this. Now we have just like a little more colorful of a PDF, especially if I'm, this is something that I'm mailing out. Um, now it's a little tricky to read, so I can go into shapes and let's search rectangle here and make this a little bit of like a, a border for us. Um, I want the fill color to be maybe this light gray and I want the border to be this dark gray. And now it's obviously covering all of the words so I can drag this back here. And you know what? I'm going to make this fill white so that it matches um, everything a little better. I can center it with these grid lines and then I can move these things around too. Um, if I want, I can hold down shift and kind of highlight a bunch of things at once. I can make these bigger or smaller. So this was just a PDF that now I can do really anything I want. Um, I can go into design assets and let's see what we have under food here. Um, I can add in some things to this part of the project. I can have it even like kind of go over the corner here. One thing that's really fun too, I'm actually not sure if... Um, Jessica is on the call, but you can share any project that you make with your team also. So I'm going to go ahead and try to share this with Jessica. Oh, she's here. Perfect. Um, you all might know Jessica from doing different things with our nonprofit team at Adobe, but I'm going to say, um, I can leave a message. So, uh, what info do we need to add here to this flyer? I can either let her edit or just comment, but I want her to edit. So I'm going to invite her while I answer some questions. And so if she's signed into Adobe Express right now, I'll see her pop up here. And then um, one thing I can do too, is I can go into this comment section. I could pin something. So maybe I could pin this and say, are these the correct dates? And I can even tag her. So now I can see that Jessica's here. Um, so she can reply to my comment. She can change these dates. She can change the color of things. If I've shared a brand with her, then she could go through and like change these to the fonts that we want, which I haven't done. Um, but I'm not touching anything right now. This is all Jessica moving things around, changing the sizes of stuff. So I'll let her do a couple of things while I answer these questions. Does Adobe have anything for nonprofits needing to create a pitch deck? We need a pitch deck template. Um, we have some presentation templates, which is what I just pulled from, but I'll share my email address. Um, would you mind, I'm like my links, would you mind sending me more information or like a sample? Because I'm happy to tell our template team exactly what you need. So that's a great question. And then Larry's asking, can Adobe Express make a data collection form? I don't believe at the moment we do have some add-ons over here. Um, so we don't have a data collection form that I know of and add-ons, but this is something that's new that are sort of extra features that certain people may need, but everyone may not need. So there are things like connecting to your Dropbox or um, looking for like different patterns or attention insights is really cool. It lets you, I just hit add right here. It lets you see, um, we're doing a flyer. It lets you see, oops, 
I don't know if I can do this while I'm I might not be able to do this while I'm sharing screen. Sorry, but it'll basically tell you like where folks are looking at your screen. You can do a color blindness simulator so I can see different types of color blindness and like what the what um what I'm creating looks like to different people based on my presentation. So those are some add-ons. Um, but great question about forms. I don't think that we um, I don't think that we have that at the moment, but that's a great suggestion. So yeah. So Jessica just added some other cute little graphics here. Um, and this is a really great way to work with your team, especially if you don't all live in the same place, you can edit and do things. So thank you so much for that, Jessica. And then to answer a question we were asked earlier. So this is a flyer size, but say, I also want to post it on LinkedIn and also want to make it an Instagram story and also want to make it an Instagram square. I can go up here to resize and there are a bunch of different options, like so, so many. Um, you can create custom sizes up here. You can just click into whatever you want. So this is already a flyer size. I want it to be a poster and an Instagram square post and a newsletter and a LinkedIn post and maybe a presentation. So if I hit duplicate and resize, it will give me everything. Um, it might not be perfect depending on how different it is and how many layers you have. So for example, this one, I'd probably want to like rework this a little bit. So, you know, I might either like move it off to the side and then add some sort of image or something over here to make it more even, or I might even like redistribute this, um, and kind of move like the information around, um, oops. Also, if you want to avoid doing what I just did, you can lock layers. So if I want the back to not move while moving the text, that's something great that you can do. Um, and then, you know, I can move things around to kind of be what I want it to be. And then you can see all of them together and you can download them all, all the pages, only certain pages. So that is great. Um, yeah, Charisma, thank you for sending me some uh, examples of what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead at the end. I'll do this too, but I'm going to go ahead and drop my email address in the chat. So if anyone needs that, feel free to um, email me your questions. Uh, and yes, this is being recorded. So you'll get either, I think later today or tomorrow, you'll get the recording, which is great. Donna's asking, is all of this free? So there is a free version of Adobe Express that doesn't have all of the features. There are some features that are premium and you can access those for free through your nonprofit through TechSoup. So uh, we dropped the link already. I'm sure we'll drop it again. If you have a nonprofit, you can get all of what Adobe Express has for free, which is super exciting. Um, Otherwise, you can access some things for free, but not everything. Uh, is there a limit on the size of a PDF, say a book that has 400 pages? I haven't tested the limit. It's possible that we don't have the capacity for 400 pages. Um, I don't know the upper limit, though. It also might just take an extremely long time to convert. So... I don't have like a solid answer, Larry, but I don't think this is ideal for something with that many pages. Um, you can try, but 400 seems, I wouldn't be surprised if that if that's outside of our limit. Um, folks asking if there's a way to import projects from other softwares. I don't believe there is an easy way, like a, a, seam, a streamlined way, you would probably have to export um, projects as like PDFs and then bring them in. I think that's maybe the only way to do something like that. Um, just got the link dropped again to sign up through TechSoup. And then, okay, Stephanie is asking a great question about our social media scheduler, which I will show right now. So I'm going to just go ahead and go into the square version because that's what I like posting on social media. So here is my square. Um, I would maybe take out these super tiny parts 
um, because that isn't great for being able to read on Instagram. And also um, we want this to all be legible. So I think I would put that info in the caption of Instagram. This feels like a better Instagram photo. We're also going to do um, another webinar with TechSoup all about marketing strategy and one all about video. So definitely stay tuned for that because there's so much that you can do with both of those. And we want to um, have time for showing everyone like really deep diving. So stay tuned for that. But Okay, so this is a square post and I could either download it as a PNG or JPEG um, so that I could do whatever I want with it, but I can also go into share and I can do schedule post. So the question, if you can just connect Instagram and not Facebook, I don't believe so. There are rules about connecting social media accounts to any content scheduler. And one of those rules is that they have to be certain types of accounts. And so you can't use a personal Instagram. And I believe that business Instagram accounts have to be connected through a Facebook because of like the meta um, business accounts, the way they're set up. So there isn't like a bypass to that in Adobe Express, or I don't think any social media scheduler, unfortunately, that's just the way Meta has decided to work. Um, so right now you can connect Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. You can connect some or all, um, and then you can choose what you want to share this to. So I'll share to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. This wouldn't really make a good Pinterest post and LinkedIn. I can choose the time. So this is happening on September 18th. Um, maybe I want to do an announcement on September 1st at, let's do 9.41 a.m. I can add my caption so I can say, don't miss our community food drive. I can add an emoji if I want or a couple. If I want to add hashtags to Instagram, I can. So I can say food drive. Where is this happening? Dayton, Ohio. Um, and my favorite thing is you can preview it. So now I can see this is what it looks like on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. So if anything is cut out or if I spell anything wrong, I'll see it here. Oh, and LinkedIn. And then um, let me go ahead. I'm going to save this as a draft because sometimes I forget to delete posts like this that aren't actually real. And then people think that things are really happening. I don't know if there's a food drive in Dayton, Ohio on September 18th. So I'm gonna schedule it as a draft, but you can just uncheck that if you want to schedule it. I'm gonna add draft. And now if I wanna see that, I can go to the homepage to schedule right here and I can see my whole calendar. So like this is my actual calendar. Uh, these are published posts. So I was in Annapolis for an Adobe event a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a post I made in Adobe Express on Monday. Mm, little little lunch thing. And this is what I have just drafted. So I can click into it and edit things if I want, save those changes. If I'm like, oh, I actually want these to go out on the second instead, I can move them or if I want to kind of stagger them. But you can see your whole setup here. You can also look at just a week at a time if that's less overwhelming to you. And then you can see some unscheduled posts over here on the right. So these are some posts that I have drafted but haven't scheduled yet. And you can turn those on and off. Um, so Stephanie is asking, uh, did you post a square? Um, Stephanie is getting an error message. Yeah. Um, so that is the, that is the thing. Um, I think that they're maybe working on this, but you at this moment can only schedule square, um, graphics through Instagram. It looks like there was a change that I think our team is trying to fix, but that's what that error message means. Um, so Joshua, that's a great question. If you can see posts that other people in your organization have, 
We don't have a shared calendar right now. I hope that's coming soon. We get asked for it a lot. I personally would love it. So right now it's only through the one account. Um, but I hope that we have a shared calendar soon. That would be super cool. Let me think about, um, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show and please keep answering or asking questions. So everything, that whole project we just made was made from a PDF that we uploaded. You can also upload a Photoshop document. So this is something, uh, this is a PSD flyer that my boss actually made. Um, so if you do work in Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, or you are given something that you want to edit from maybe a designer and you don't have Photoshop or don't know how to use it or don't want to open it, you can bring those projects into Adobe Express also. And same thing, it will convert it into something that you can edit here. So this is for a 4th of July. Um, let's, I can, you know, just move things, delete things. Everything is, everything is now an Adobe Express layer. Let's have this be a 4th of July uh, community party. That looks cool, like a, like a neighborhood block party. Um, I'll have this start at maybe 8 p.m. because we're doing fireworks. And one thing that I wanted to show that I didn't get to show yet is using um, Adobe Firefly's AI generator. So here we have this background. It's totally fine, but I'm going to actually delete this. I'm going to go into media, photos, text to image. I'll make this portrait. And then I want to say uh, blue fireworks. So this on a dark sky. This will actually create a brand new image that we can use in this flyer. So this is if, you know, we searched maybe stock photos and we weren't seeing exactly what we wanted. I can do something like this and get a bunch of different fireworks options. I can change it. I can load more. This is like an art theme. I can make it more of graphics. I can make it a painting. Um, so you can kind of click on a bunch of different stuff and create like really what you want. Um, I am going to, should have four, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and use, I think this one is pretty great. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to drag it to be the size I want it to be. I'm going to drag this down to the background, or I could also hit set as page background. And then this looks a little hard to read right now. I can go down to adjustments and change a bunch of things. Like I can change it to be brighter or not. I can change like the highlights and shadows um, for folks who really want to do photo editing. But what I want to do, there's a sharpen and there's a blur. I want to up the blur. So you can like still kind of tell it's fireworks, but also this makes it way easier to read. Um, so you can do things like that with the generative AI. I could also delete this ice cream cone. I could ask it to give me a new ice cream cone. Let's see what that does. Um, you can get specific, like what color you want it to be, what kind of cone you want it to be. I don't care that much about this. So I, it can kind of look like anything for this project. Let's do maybe this one. And then I can edit this like anything else. So I can ask it to remove the background of this for me. Um, I still have this kind of bottom here, which I don't really want. So maybe I'll replace this with, actually, you know what? I'm going to just delete this and show something else. Um, can you animate the background? Yes. So if I want the background to be maybe, uh, let's do something a little, yeah, have it breathing and really slow. I don't know what this will be like. So the one thing about animating an image like that is I think what I would actually want to do is detach it from the page background and make sure it's like much bigger. 
so that when it pulses in and out, um, it doesn't like show over the edges. Yeah, cool. That'll work. And then we also have these text effects. So down here, if I go into text effects, I can have this say 4th of July. Oops, sorry. What I want this to look like is this gold drip is pretty cool. Um, yeah, cool. So that's the text prompt. I want this to say 4th of July. And so now we're going to get this like gooey gold drip to say whatever we want. And then we can still edit this. Um, so I would maybe delete these things, have this say 4th of July party. Move this around a little bit. Yeah, cool. So that just kind of goes to show like this is a this is a Photoshop document um, that we were able to edit all of this, which is very cool, um, especially because if you don't know how to use Photoshop, opening something like that is pretty challenging. Um, so now you can open it all in Adobe Express. This is still um, a video. And just to show you can resize video also. So I can go ahead and make this if I want it to be a square. Um, and I also want it to be a, uh, this might look a little goofy, but I'll make it like a presentation size. Um, so here I have to go into this one and really drag the video over to the edges. Um, but yeah, we have just resized, you know, three different videos at once. And then you can also download these as mp4s if you make it a video and then you're like just kidding never mind you can download it as a flat excuse me image too it just won't play um and I think that's a little bit of everything I wanted to show in Adobe Express but we have like 10-ish minutes left if anyone has other questions that we haven't answered um Jessica's in the chat if there's anything I forgot to show off let me know but like I said, we are planning to do another more like marketing centered workshop here with TechSoup and also one specifically around video. I've been playing with a lot of video and animations because for me, a lot of those tools are a little too complicated. So I like to look at our video templates um, and get ideas and then just kind of go through and like tweak them to what I want. But I really like different ideas of how to do um things like this and you can set up different scenes so we'll do a whole workshop around video and and ways that you can use video for marketing for your nonprofit um but yeah if anyone else has any questions please feel free to drop them in chat um i also can share uh my info um this is, I, I dropped my email address already, but this is everything, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, um, my entire job at Adobe, other than doing workshops like this is helping answer questions specifically for people using Adobe Express. So please feel free to connect with me. Please feel free to email me. Please feel free to send me a direct message. I am very, very happy to help. Um, I have spent a lot of time learning the ins and outs of Adobe Express and this new version just came out two weeks ago. So I'm still learning that, but really I'm here to help you all be as successful as you want um, or as you possibly can be. Oh, Charisma says uh, that they sent the example. So thank you. I will send that off to our content team and also uh, that they created such a cool call to action with Adobe. It was really nice. So that's awesome. I love to hear that. Um, Thank you so much, Gina, for joining. Thanks everyone for joining. Like I said, if you have more questions, please feel free to message me for anyone watching the recording. That offer stands too. I'm available and very, very happy to help. So thank you all very, very much for coming. Um, thank you, TechSoup, for partnering with us on this. And yeah, if you think of questions later, I'm here. <laughs>